Hey everyone, it is the Austin Travis County EMS System Office of the Chief Medical Officer official podcast. I'm your host, Dr. J.R. Pickett. Today we're going to be doing a short episode on push dose pressors. Now, what prompted this recently is I've had several questions about uh, administering push dose pressors, when to choose what, and also we have had a little national shortage of these babies, these uh, one milligram in 10 ml or one to 10,000 epinephrine pre-filled syringes. Uh, apparently, we can't get any of them right now, and that's a problem because we use them a lot especially for cardiac arrests. Well, here we're talking about push dose pressors today for a few different indications. Uh, the chief indications that I will do a push dose presser is I have somebody with a tenuous blood pressure, maybe low blood pressure, maybe they're a bit uh, bradycardic, and I'm going to be doing an RSI, so I'm going to be giving them medications that could drop their systemic vascular resistance. I'm going to push the Versed and the Rocuronium. If their blood pressure is already borderline, I might kind of push them into that hypotensive range, which may not be good for them, especially if we're dealing with somebody like with a head injury or something like that. So a little push dose presser will help to counter that dip that you see when you give somebody a, a bunch of sedative and muscle relaxant type of medications. The other situation is I have a patient who is hypotensive and I'm going to need to start a presser on them, but that's going to take some time to mix that up. I mean, especially if we're in the hospital, uh, we may mix that at the bedside or we may have that mixed by pharmacy and sent up or by the in-department pharmacist. And so that's going to take a few minutes. And if you have somebody who's really bradycardic, hypotensive, you need to get something on board right now, then a push dose presser is a good way to go. Now, I have heard some folks say, well, you know, push dose pressers are just easy. We should use those instead of drips to maintain blood pressure and shock in, in the pre-hospital setting, I don't agree with that approach. I, I don't think that's a good idea. And the reason I don't like that idea is because we're pushing that in, like you br bring their blood pressure up and then it goes down and then you rebolus and it goes up and then it goes down and you rebolus and it goes up and you, you know, it's, you're constantly like chasing it. Uh, and I, I don't think that is necessarily physiologically right because that's not really as human beings what we do. Uh, so I, if I'm going to do a push dose presser for shock, then that is simply a bridge. I want to get that drip started as soon as I possibly can. So first I want to talk about push dose epinephrine, how we've historically done it, and also another method for doing this that you can use and you can start using tomorrow. So how have we done this normally? Well, we've... Um, Usually taking these pre-filled syringes, I'm going to unbox this because like apparently it's a thing like people love walk, watching unboxing on YouTube. Um, and so I do the medication cross check with my partner, just verify that I've actually got the right drug and I don't have something else. And I take these out and I verified the, uh, the date. And so I take these and just pop those off and put it together. And now I have one milligram in 10, 10 mLs uh, or 0.1 milligram per mL or 100 micrograms per mL. I don't want to push this for push dose pressure. That, that, that's uh, high concentration and badness could happen. Uh, so what I want to do instead is I'm going to take this, I'm going to pop that cap off, and I'm going to get rid of nine cc's of this here. So I'm just going to squirt that out. And I'll just do that into my coffee cup here. Boom. Okay, I've got one ml left. I've got one uh, ml, which has 0 0.1 milligrams of epinephrine. Concentration hasn't changed yet. We're about to do that. So what I'm then going to do is take this. I'm going to take whatever fluid I happen to have handy. Uh, so usually like a little bag of normal saline, big bag of lactated ringers, a bag of D5, you know, whatever it is you use if you have those uh, if you have those uh, little vials of uh, saline, that's fine too, uh, but whatever. I want a, some kind of fluid that I can then dilute this with. So I'll take this and I will take my needle here like so. I will apply the needle and then I will take my bag of fluid. Again, I've medication cross-checked it. Make sure this isn't like D10 or like lidocaine or something like that. And uh, I will pop that in here like so. Now notice I didn't push any into the bag here. I'm just getting some fluid out of here. So uh, I will draw it up as such. And now I've got 10 cc's again. So what's my concentration in that syringe right there? 0.1 milligrams in 10 mLs. Uh, so it is 0.01 milligrams or 10 micrograms 
per ml, 10 mics per ml epinephrine. The reason I like doing this way in this syringe rather than like, you know, getting other syringes and mixing it all together is, guess what? It's still labeled. It still says epinephrine. So if I take this and I put it in my pocket, then I know what I have here uh, to push. So now when I push this mixture, I'm going to push two mls at a time that'll give me 20 micrograms or 0 0.02 milligrams of epinephrine that's enough to, to kind of bump that pressure for just a few minutes uh, bump that heart rate for just a few minutes to get through to either uh, let them stabilize after I give them the paralytics and so forth, or uh, it gets me a chance to mix up whatever infusion of a presser that I'm going to use, whether that's norepinephrine or dopamine or dobutamine, whatever, whatever you, or epinephrine, whatever it is that you want to use. So that's one way that you can do it. You take that pre-filled syringe, get rid of 9 cc's, uh, and then drop 9 cc's of something inert like saline, and then that will be your uh, your push dose uh, presser concentration. Now, when I do this, I, again, I, I like these to be labeled um, syringes that are sitting around with push dose pressers. They're, they have a long history of being administered uh, incorrectly and uh, being mistaken for something else. So you always want to have a, a label on it. So that's why I like doing this. Maybe make a little note on there, take a Sharpie and say, okay, it's you know, push dose press, you know, push dose epinephrine, something along those lines. So I can either draw it out of a bag, or if I have a bag that has a drip set uh, attached to it, uh, then I can come on down here, and I've got one ml there, and I can just hook it up to that drip set, like so. I've got it open on this end. I got to pinch the patient side, so I'm not drawing up from the patient side, and then I can just draw it from that line into here so you don't necessarily have to have the needle especially if you're concerned about sharps injuries if you have a drip set with lure lock on it and if the patient's already got some fluid hanging like a, a saline or ringers or whatever then you can use it for that so again same process so now when i give this it's going to be two mls 20 micrograms of epinephrine now let me do this another way. Let's say we don't have any more of these because it's something we're about to run into here. Uh, and I have something that's actually gonna like make all of this a lot simpler, especially if I'm gonna start an epinephrine infusion. When do I like epinephrine infusion? Couple reasons. Uh, one, anaphylaxis. Epinephrine is the drug. And I, I like the intramuscular epinephrine, but that to me is a bridge to get them to the epinephrine infusion. The problem with th using the intramuscular epinephrine in anaphylaxis is if that person's in shock, they may not be per perfusing that well, so you can't really predict how much of that drug, how quickly is going to get into their system. When you hang an infusion, you know it's going where it needs to be. It's going there right away, and that's why I like it. So if you've got somebody with good anaphylaxis going on, then yeah, go ahead, give them the IM epinephrine, but then start an epinephrine infusion. So, I want to make a, an epinephrine infusion. So, I'm going to take a 250 ml bag of, in this case, saline, 0.9% sodium chloride. And I'm going to grab two of these little guys. This is epinephrine. This is one milligram and one ml. So, same thing you're going to draw up for your... Uh, for your intramuscular dose, right? So I'll grab two of those and we'll do the medication cross-check. I'll take a look at the date. I'll take a look at the vial, make sure I got the right patient, etc., and double check with my partner. They're going to lay eyes on that vial and make sure that I've got the right thing. And so I'm going to draw that up and here. So I've got some already drawn up. I got two mLs of epinephrine, one to 1,000 or one milligram, one ml. So there's two milligrams of epinephrine in here. Well, now I, I take my, uh, my trusty 250 mLs of fluid and I'm going to inject that right in there. So again, through the medication port, boom, injecting that two milligrams in here. And now, so mix that up. Okay, we're not like shaking it vigorously. We don't make a whole bunch of bubbles. We don't make like foam in there. Um, we're just, you know, inverting it, making sure that it gets mixed around. My concentration in this bag now is eight micrograms per ml. 
So eight mics per ml. Now remember that. What was the dose for push dose epinephrine? Oh yeah, 20 micrograms. So if I draw up now from this bag, two and a half mls, got two and a half mls right there, that's 20 micrograms of epinephrine. So that's my push dose. I mix it up, hang this up, give them a little push dose and start running the infusion. And so that gives them that loading dose, brings that pressure up and then we can maintain that with the continuous infusion of epinephrine. What dose am I gonna continue this on? So we wanna go two to 20 micrograms per minute. So if I have this 250 ml bag, I've got this on a 60 drop per ml set, uh, so a micro drip set, if you will, then it is 15 to 150 drops per minute for that two to 20 micrograms per minute. So one drop every four seconds uh, up to 150 drops per minute. So it's like uh, two and a half drops per, uh, per second. Uh, so you can just titrate that up and down as you need to. Now that's approximate, okay? It, like these aren't that that precise as an instrument, but that'll, that'll get you where you need to be. So again, it's two to 20 mics per minute, 15 to 150 drops per minute is your dose when running the infusion. Two and a half cc's gets you your bump to bring their pressure up to give them that loading dose. Fantastic. Okay. Now, what about norepinephrine? There is some data showing that norepinephrine is a superior presser for most of the shock that you're going to run into that you'll treat with pressors. Obviously, we're not going to treat hemorrhagic shock with a presser, but others, spinal shock, neurogenic shock, a cardiogenic shock, uh, septic shock, those things we, we will treat with norepinephrine preferentially. So here's how we do this. I get out my norepi. I've got four mls, four milligrams norepinephrine right here. So pop that and uh, draw that up. And now I have four mls right here of norepinephrine. Again, I'm going to take that four mls and I'm gonna put it in a 250 cc bag, or 250 ml bag of saline. I'm just gonna pop this in here like so. Boom, four mls in there. And I'm gonna shake it up. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Okay, now again, not shaking, shaking. Okay, we're just in inverting it. What's my concentration here now? Okay, it is 16 micrograms per ml in here. So what is my push dose for norepinephrine? Usually it's around 20 to 30 micrograms. So if I draw up, I draw up two mls of this, now, if you want to get like exactly 20 micrograms, it's going to be like one and a quarter mLs. Um, so who cares? Uh, like, I don't want to be that precise about it, honestly. Um, so this will be close enough. Two mLs will get you 32 micrograms of this. And that two mLs, that's, a, that's your push dose right there. So you give them that two mLs bump and then you can start the drip. Uh, if you are just doing it because you're going to RSI somebody and they're just kind of, eh, you know, tenuous blood pressure, but they're not to the point where you want to start them on a presser just yet, then, okay, mix this up, drop your two mLs, push that as your push dose uh, presser before you push the paralytics and the, uh, and the sedatives, and then if you need it, you've got it, it's already made, because this is a concentration that we're going to use for running an infusion. So what's our dose for an infusion? For norepinephrine, it's 2 to 12 micrograms per minute. So with at this concentration right here, it's between 8 and 45 drops per minute. So a little bit tighter range than what we have with the epinephrine, but uh, that will get you where you need to be. Again, that's on a 60 drop micro drip set uh, to uh, to 12 micrograms per minute, eight to 45 drops per minute, 250 ml bag, four milligrams of norepinephrine on a 60 drop set. Perfect, I love it. So once I've got my drip mixed up here, I always wanna label this drip. I wanna make sure that it doesn't get mistaken for just something else random because again, that's an error that has occurred in many places in the past. So I'm gonna write on here, You know, either you have a Sharpie marker, if you've got drug labels, that's fantastic. Uh, then uh, I can put on here epinephrine or epi 
two milligrams. Uh, if you want to put the end concentration, that's okay. But at least we have something on here that tells us what's in this bag, that it's not just the saline that it is uh, labeled with. Now, another method for doing this, if you don't happen to have that Sharpie on you, is if you have some tape and uh, say we've just mixed up a norepinephrine infusion here, is uh, to take that empty vial and tape it to the bag so then oh okay added this in here the added advantage of that being that somebody else can kind of back check your work and they can see that oh yeah it's uh, norepinephrine it's not expired it's four milligrams and so they can do their own drug calculations if they want to do that uh, i think that a lot of times ems starts infusions in the field and we get to the hospital and they discontinue the infusions right away uh, which can be harmful to patients and we've actually had that result in deaths uh, but the, it also it's just a, a matter of well I didn't mix this and therefore I don't trust them and I don't want to uh, want to use it. If we're using standardized concentrations, so we always know that this is exactly how much in, much is in here, then it is less likely that that's going to occur once you arrive in the emergency department. Now the hospital is always going to want to have somebody on drugs. Like if you're running something in the field and they want to start that drug in the hospital, they're eventually going to want to transition to something that has been mixed up by a pharmacist there at the hospital. And so that's been verified. Uh, but until that takes place, then the field drip will have to do. So that is what I have for you today about push dose pressers. Uh, if you like it, give us a share. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good one.